Well, I want to welcome everybody here to the Philly Duncan Music Lounge. This is a very cool space. I'm very happy to be here. My name is Jason Solomon. I host a podcast called Solomonster Sounds Off since 2007 because I am an old fart. But we are we are here and we are here to talk about WrestleMania. But also, before we get into WrestleMania predictions, which is what I'm going to be doing a little bit later, uh, we have a special guest, and I want to make sure that I tee it up the right way, and I give him an introduction worthy of a Hall of Famer. He is a WWE Hall of Famer. He is a co-host for Sirius XM's Busted Open Radio. He is the world's strongest man, and he is all elite. Mark Henry is with us. Yeah. Here from the Philly. Duncan Lounge. That's one fine American. <laughs> you know, Mark is a busy man, and I, I want to make sure I, I plug this up front because this is the first of many events that you are taking part in today. Mark is going to be joining his fellow Busted Open hosts, Dave LaGreca, Bully Ray, and Tommy Dreamer. Uh, they're going to be, I believe, doing a whole series of shows now yeah. through Monday, uh, the first of which is going to be taking place later today at 5 o'clock from Xfinity Live. And it is going to be the Busted Open Masters class. And I wanted to ask you about that. What is the Busted Open Masters class? Uh, the Masters class basically started. There's a bunch of wrestlers around the world that uh, listen to Busted Open and they will hear our critiques. And then they would send us messages and like DMs like, hey, man, that hit. Like, I understood, man. Like, you know, if you have any critiques for me. And we said, man, let's just do a class. Let's just do a show that's tailor made for what we see in pro wrestling, what we feel like the problems are in wrestling. And some of the stuff, we want to pat people on the back. We want to big up people that do stuff that's uh, fundamentally sound, uh, story-wise, psychology-wise, um, and, and that's what the show is. And then after that, later on tonight, Mark is going to be taking part in another event. Remix Rumble presents Wrestling Nightclub for anyone over the age of 21. Uh, at Concourse Dance Bar, that's 1635 Market Street. You can celebrate WrestleMania. This is the only wrestling nightclub that you can partake in here this entire weekend. You can uh, hang out with other wrestling fans. You can have drinks. You can dance. You can sing Mark Henry's song and talk about wigs getting split and all kinds of stuff at the top of your lungs. I think I might do that, actually. Uh, and it will feature a special guest DJ set from this man himself. You know, when I introduced him before, I said, man, this is a lot of titles here. We have to add a new one now, DJ. Yeah, World's Strongest DJ. DJ. I, I mean, it, it ain't many things that that I have not tried in my life other than drugs and, you know, bank robberies. Everything is free game. First time for everything, uh, though, right? No, 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 no. No, no, no bank, bank robberies. robberies. No bank I, robberies? I love my freedom. Okay. Love it. And uh, no drugs. I'm I'm too much of a control well, freak. Yeah, we can we can all agree on that. Uh, this is actually my second time meeting you, and you will you will have absolutely no memory of this whatsoever. But you, uh, it was four of you. It was you, Luna Vachon, Mick Foley, and Owen Hart walked into a luxury box at the Meadowlands Arena for a Raw episode. It was right before Raw went on the air. This was back in '98. And yeah, I definitely wouldn't remember that. I remember that, but I'll tell you what I remember. I remember all four, and I, I can say this about all four of you, all walked in, could not have been nicer. Spent extra time. Everybody was nervous. Anybody want any pictures? You and Owen in particular were just the nicest people. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. It's, it's called being clowns. Well. Like, we, we used to act the fool. Yeah. And yeah. good cop, bad cop, it was usually two good cops. Yeah. Uh, Owen was like one of the coolest people I ever met, and and he did love people, especially kids, yeah. and and that's where we both, you know, kind of got along real well. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to bring it up because you know we have this whole new generation of fans who, you know, may not have watched him and may not have had the chance to meet him, but you you got to know him on a personal level, and I'm sure you have tons of stories that that you can share. But you know, every time I hear you talk about him, it's always it's always with a smile. It's always yeah. like you can see you right now starting. He was a laugh. practical joker. Like yeah. right now, he would be trying to find a way to embarrass you. <laughs> That was his thing. He Wouldn't just be too hard. Oh my gosh, that dude right there. We drove and called my mom. He told my mom he was the IRS. He was gonna take her house. <laughs> like he used to call his dad at least once a week and tell him that you know he didn't pay something and they're gonna have to come take your car. 
And, you know, just like he was just a prank of joke. There was no punk. There was no jerky boys. There was none of that way back then. And Owen was doing that long before anybody else was doing it. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you this first, because you are a Hall of Famer. And among all of the events this weekend, the WWE Hall of Fame is coming up on Friday night. And you were in the class of 2018. This Friday, they're inducting Paul Heyman. We have Bull Nakano going in, the U.S. Express, Thunderbolt Patterson, Leah Maivia, and Muhammad Ali. And so when I mention those names, is there one name that stands out to you or, or a speech that's going to be made on Friday night that you are looking forward to? More than? Thunderbolt Patterson. Yeah. Because he got... Um, he was a tough dude, really, really good wrestler in a time where black people were not allowed to shine uh, the way that his talent said it should have. And like uh, getting to meet him and talking to him and hearing the stories, like if he tell half the stories on that stage that, that he's told me before, wow, people going to be blown away. And um, him and Gerald Briscoe, they traveled the world. Excuse me, got to get my tea. You know, you know, lubricate the the pipes. Got to get ready for uh, DJing tonight. You know, stinking straw. Um, but 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 Thunderbolt was uh, uh, he he was a guy that was a trailblazer, and he was a guy that uh, fought fought a bunch of fights, and none of them was none of the fights that we talked about was in the ring. He was he was talking for about equality and respect of his peers. And if you didn't respect him, he made you respect him. He whooped a lot of people's ass. And, and it got him. I mean, it was yeah, it, it it's was, well documented. Yeah. There were famous wrestlers that he had on, on the ground and he used to make them say, Mr. Black Man, let me breathe. Hmm. That was his thing. Mr. Black Man, can I breathe? Because he would choke people out. He was a bad dude. Well, like you said, I mean, he he stood up for really all wrestlers. And as yeah. far as, I mean, things that got him blackballed from certain places. And it was to the detriment of his <laughs> career. But he did and it. People anyway. didn't want that dude around. No, no. Because he would whoop them. Right. And he'd be like, look, you're going to respect me. I'm going to make you. And, and, you know, in our society, uh, a lot of that is not, uh, you'll get canceled for it now. There's such a thing. You get canceled. But, like, um, if you say something about hurting animals or puppies or something like that, it's tolerated. It's cool. But, you know, the gay rights and um, uh, civil rights, people take, like, what, what's the big deal? Like, we, we all got to do better. Paul Heyman is going in as well on Friday awesome. night. Now, I've heard you say before, and this was, I think, last year, and during this run that he's been on with Roman Reigns, you said that his performances have been Emmy-worthy. I yeah. mean, the way that he grovels and begs and just the way that he, I mean, his performances on TV. So I want to ask you, during your time in WWE, what your relationship was like, if you had any sort of relationship with him, and if you still do today. I do. Uh, Paul is, is one of my favorite people. Uh, he is a uh, savant when it comes to thought processing. And people wonder, like, man, Mark Henry is successful in three diff or four different turns and three different decades. How does that happen? It's not by the physical things. It's by the storytelling. It's about the, uh, the little nuances. Uh, and you got to be intelligent. I, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I, I know a lot about a little bit, and that's just what it's going to be. Uh, I've been to the Parliament. I've been to the White House. Um, I've been to um, some of the, the highest offices in the world. And I don't know if there's a lot of people that have the exposure and understanding the systems the way that I do because of being a professional athlete and traveling since I was 15 years old. So uh, people like Paul, I could have a conversation with and we never talk about wrestling. Hmm. And then we'll be able to circle it back and how to make it relevant in wrestling. So like, you know, getting emotion out of pro wrestling is Paul's strength. 
And he did that with all of those guys at ECW. Uh, not the best businessman. And he, he'll tell you that. He's like, hey, I, I, if I had two nickels, you know, I, I spent 15 cents. <laughs> you know, that's him. Yeah. But at least he honest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people can't admit they faults. And um, I can respect a man that could admit where he was wrong and say, hey, I'm going to try to fix it rather than make it a problem. Well, you also look at the. I mean, you can't argue with success. I mean, through the decades, all the people, all the champions, all the main event stars that he's managed, all the WrestleMania main events he's been a part of. I mean, if you think of the Hall of Fame class this year, it's Philadelphia is the perfect place for it. I mean, it just makes sense that he would go in. But I wanted to ask you about this because I had some people who knew I was going to speak to you and they said, ask him about the jacket. <laughs> and I know that last year, your salmon retirement or non-retirement jacket. The lion ass jacket. The, that's right. The lion ass jacket. You loaned it to WWE. I believe they had it on display at Fan Access. So do you have it back in your possession? I have it back in my possession. Okay. But I did loan them uh, all of my every area of my wrestling gear. They got the red, white, and blue first one. I loaned it to them. Uh, I loaned them the uh, Nation of Domination gear. And I loaned them the sexual chocolate gear. And they have the world's strongest gear uh, with the Master Staff Sergeant patch. Um, and I, I, I mean, that's, uh, I'm looking forward to going over there to the exhibit and seeing how they, you know, set me up. But uh, for all those people that are going to go to the world, look for it. It's over there. Well, I, I, I just. And I don't work for them. That's true. You know how live you got to be. I. That's true. But you get hooked up at another company? Well, if anybody can get away with it, though, it's you. I mean, you have the equity. Listen, I own Mark Henry. There's a lot of guys that prostituted their careers and gave companies the right to their name. My name is on loan to you while I work for you. When I'm gone, there's no perpetuities in my contract. Learn to read contracts. You know, like, th that's what I, that's why we have master's class. It's not just wrestling. Like we 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 trying to teach guys how to buy a home. There's wrestlers that still live in apartments. There, there's there's wrestlers that don't own uh, stuff. They they've been pin, spending three and four thousand dollars on rent. Like man, get a mortgage and own that shit. Like that's we we trying to help people sure. uh, diversify and, and do more. Um, MarkHenry.com or the MarkHenry.com is going to be tailor-made for that. Like my new website, um, David is going to be running my site and and, and we're going to be t helping people, giving people advice. I, I've been doing it for years. I have guys come tell me all the time, man, the best advice you ever gave me was to buy those properties. Huh. Wow. And they still got them and they still making money, you know, and that's what it, that's what it is. Well, we are here in town for WrestleMania. You've been a part of several WrestleManias yourself. As somebody who has been a part of multiple ones and WrestleManias in big stadiums, you know, they're going to be at Lincoln Financial Field this weekend. They're yeah. going to have 60,000 people. Most people in life will never have that experience of knowing what it's like to walk out there to their theme music and have all these people. So for you, as someone who's been there, the first time that you experience that, what is that like? The first time um, is like the first time you put your hand on a girl's knee. You want to go further, but you got to get permission. <laughs> like the fans, they got to give you a reason to go all out. And like you, you sweating, you like, oh shoot, man, it's, it's it gets tense, and you 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 learn to love that feeling. But the first time, bro, I, I can still remember being behind that curtain going like to where you can't breathe, you know, on sure. y'all, y'all ever got there yeah. where you can't breathe, you trying, but you, man, you just can't get a breath. Like it, it was like, that was, that was a petrifying feeling. And I, I, the only thing I can equate it to is the first time that you, um, that, that you, you know, try to go to first, second base, you know, it's just a nerve wracking feeling. Yeah. 
of all the WrestleManias that you've been a part of, is there a moment that stands out to you, not, not as a fan, but as a performer, as somebody who was in it as your favorite, that you look back on and say, that that's the moment I remember the most? I think the, the biggest is uh, WrestleMania 22 um, being put in a coffin because I'm claustrophobic. Oh, so whoops! <laughs> I was more worried about being put in that damn coffin <laughs> than I was the success of the match. But being that you work in arguably the greatest WrestleMania performer of all time, people say Shawn Michaels, but um, Shawn Michaels just won more titles. You know, Undertaker went, you know, 20 and 20 and 0 at one point you know, to, you know, at WrestleMania. So somebody told me on an average in his career that he made around uh, a million, million five for each WrestleMania. That's right there. That's, that's, you know, $21 million, you know, so like that dude, he was able to, um, if you're ever going to listen to somebody, that's, that's the one to listen to. Was there a piece of advice that he gave you that you still carry to this day that you think was the most valuable? Yeah, you got you got uh, two ears and one mouth for a reason. You know, like if, if you listen more than you talk, um, you'll pick up stuff. And I feel like the greatest people, I always went to them and said, you know, basically, like, if, if you was going to start all over again, what would you do? And then I just shut the hell up and just let them go. Because they'll they'll map out every mistake they ever made and try to fix it in real time. And, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be able to, to do that. And um, I feel like um, I've applied a lot of that science. Because it is a science. It's making money and having success in anything is a science. This is this is worth studying. Well, I think that leads well into the next question I had for you. W one of the things I know that you're very pat, and I could tell just by hearing you talk about the master's class and all the lessons that you've learned. I know you're very passionate about scouting talent, and you have a very good eye for talent. And one person that you discovered and I know have mentored, is on the WrestleMania card this weekend, that being Bianca Belair. Two of them. Well, I was going to say two of them because one of the women that she is teaming with, I know that you also mentored her at the beginning of her career, that being Jade Cargill. Well, not, not just mentoring is somebody is doing something and you give them advice and support. They were not involved in wrestling, period. They were doing other things. And I said, you need to quit doing what you're doing and you need to wrestle. That's 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 what I do. I, I find people in different walks of life and say you're tailor made for pro wrestling. And and, and you when you meet them, you know who they are. You know, he, that person that you hear them before you see them might be a candidate. That person that you walk in the room and everybody's going, hey, 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 who, who's the girl with the uh, pantyhose with the flowers on? Like you, you start the whispers, and and then it leads to, let me hear him talk. If I hadn't heard him talk, and then when you can ask a question about where where do you see yourself in, uh, in five the next five to ten years, and they say, well, I'm kind of freed up. I'm trying to figure that out. All right, hmm. and like you, you just got to know. Like the the people have it. Bianca Belair was in a CrossFit competition. And the whole point of a competition is to exert energy when it's needed. Bianca had on a tutu and a big giant bow in her hair, which created resistance in my point of view from watching. And not only was she doing apparatus, she would do a cartwheel and a backflip and turn and then go do the next. She was an entertainer yeah. more than she was an athlete. And she was all American at Tennessee in track. Mm -hmm. And then she went into 
being one of the top um, uh, CrossFit athletes in the world. And I was like, you could be world champion in this sport for the next 10 years and make $20,000 a year and have to get sponsors to cover all your expenses. And you might make another 20 or you can stop doing this and start wrestling. And she was like, I said, there's girls that made 400 grand this year. She went over 600 grand this year. You're welcome. <laughs> Same thing with Jay Cargill. She played basketball at Jacksonville State. And you see people that she she actually reached out to me. Like, I want to be a wrestler. I think I could do this, and I could this, and I could use this move. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Time out. Hold on. I was like, look, you're a pretty girl and everything. I, do you really know what you asking? Do you know what wrestling is? Oh, I've been a fan of wrestling since I was little. I like wrestling. I could do this. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. <laughs> like, pumpy breaks. I was like, do you think you can handle it? Because it's tough. Like, it hurts. And she was like, well, I love to try. So I sent her to a guy that with the intent on running her pretty ass off because she talked a lot. And I said, Rip, y'all ever read about Rip Rogers? He's the worst. Of course. He's the worst. <laughs> I love him like a brother. And he taught me a lot because he's one. Of, he's a he's a master button pusher. You ever met people that push your buttons and they do the shit for fun, and then they go, "I'm just playing with you." <laughs> and I'm like, "Rip, like I was finna punch you in the face. Like stop." I sent her to him, and he said, "Mark, I hit her as hard as a human could hit another human," and she turned to me and said, "That's all you got." And he said, I don't know where the hell you found that one. That one right there going to be good. So, like, I just, I, I have to, I test you too. Everybody, they, listen, I don't date in wrestling. I got a lot of rules that go with being mentored by me. And dating wrestlers is one of my no-nos. And Bianca, her and Montez Ford got married because Montez called me before she talked to her dad about them getting together. Wow. Are you surprised by, my guess is no, but are you surprised by how quickly that she has elevated? I mean, if you look at where she started and she's only had a few WrestleManias, but up until this year, she was always in a title match. She is one of the premier women in that division in the span of only a few years. Did you expect Not that as quickly? Not at all. They both have the sickness. Like, you know, great athletes, uh, great competitor. I I like that competitive thing too. I don't know if you noticed or not, but everybody that I pick, Brian Danielson, Baron Corbin, Braun Strowman, they were all competitors. They like to compete. And I, I will tell people, you, you've been in the ring this week because sometimes you don't have matches, but you still need to get in the ring if you under five years in wrestling and you ain't in the ring three, four days a week, you ain't going to make it. So like the, the, the way that I teach and mentor and instruct and the rules that I set, like I probably should charge people for it, but I don't because that's my way of giving back to the business. But all of the people that I work with are competitive, hyper competitive, cry when they lose ain't no shame in it you like man you 340 pounds you don't cry yeah i cry let me lose and th but the whole time that i'm losing that i lost while you celebrating and raising the title i'm plotting on how i'm gonna knock your ass down and i'm gonna be in the gym every day i'm gonna be studying film until I fall asleep with the clicker in my hand. That's what that's what I teach. I teach passion and and the work ethic that it takes to be with your talent. 
anybody in it, on the AEW roster right now that you are doing that with that is kind of under your learning tree? Uh, Will Hobbs, uh, Darby Allen, um, King, he, 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 he's too young right now, I think, to kind of pour everything that I want into him. But, uh, um, but Hook and a few other guys, like none of the girls, um, I, I think that they'll get to that point. They'll ask me to kind of take it on. <laughs> Excuse me. But there's some of them that they already dating wrestlers and then they, they kind of know kind of my philosophy and some people, they run from it. Hmm. We are with Mark Henry right now. He is going to be doing a master's class as part of busted open radio today at 5. PM. That is at Xfinity live. And then tonight at 8. PM, there is a wrestling nightclub event at the concourse dance bar. Hmm. And I know he is looking, he's getting ready for it right now. He's adding a new title, which is DJ World Master. DJ. There you go. World's Strongest DJ. And you can catch him at that event later. I want to ask you about somebody that I know you were very familiar with. Um, you might know him. He's called The Rock. And you kind of, pop, kind yeah, of popular. He's a little bit, right? He's a little bit popular. As somebody who came up with him, because when you joined WWE, you made the main roster. It was 1996, same year that he debuted at Survivor Series that year. And in the next couple of years, the two of you were rubbing elbows as part of the nation. So you were working together. I don't know if you two were traveling together at that time. We lived together. He he moved in with me. He had uh he came from Calgary playing football. He had seven dollars or something to his name and couldn't get a they had him in a hotel. And they told him, Hey, uh when you check out the day, you got to find somewhere to live. <laughs> and uh, so I was like, man, rather than spending money you don't have, just come move in with me. I got an extra bedroom. We went and bought him a bedroom suit. And uh, he moved in. And um, we went and worked out and trained together every day. You see his ascent over the years. And obviously, he's one of the hardest work I ever met. One of the biggest stars in the entire world. I mean, it's not just wrestling; it's movies. He's, you know, he's got Terra Mana and he's the UFL now. That's money. When when you can acquire other entities in 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 different walks of life, um, I mean, ter- the all of those all that stuff is, you know, what you can put your name on and what you can own a majority stake in. That that just that's money stuff. The things that have influenced, uh, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion, is the fact that, you know, he has um, gone into Hollywood and he changed the narrative from uh, it just being what the studios wanted. Everything project that he worked on, he demands that there be Black and Polynesian work staffs and talent in his movies. That's I respect that. Like if I'm if I'm gonna be a shot caller, uh, I'm I want representation. I want people that look like me. I want people that um, are willing to work the way that I'm willing to work. And I'm not saying that just because you look like me, you're gonna get a job over a white dude that's more talented than you. If he more talented than you, then you're gonna work for him, but work for me. Mm-hmm. Like, it's got to be fair. And I, I think that's kind of what Dwayne is doing. And and I, I just respect the hell out of it. I, I, I love the fact that he's family first. You know, like, man, it, like the bloodline is is a real thing. You know, uh, people throwing it. We got a lot of fans here. Ones. We got a lot of fans here. We'll get to you the know. predictions in a little bit. Don't worry. Um, but I, 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 I respect the hell out of him. Yeah. Yeah. Good dude. Well, what do you think about his return so far? So he, he, he came back, he was away for a while. He would make sporadic appearances, but now we haven't had him on television as part of the show this consistently in years. And he's playing the bad guy. What do you think of his return so far to WWE? Well, he also, um, introducing the world that don't know him in wrestling to who he is. Not many people get to go home. 
um, Hollywood had shut down for a while and he was able to come and jump right back in to what made him and go back and reprise, if you will, like who he is and what he did for the business. Now, it's not a rescue situation where in case of emergency, break glass, right. bring the rock, fix it, save us, yeah. help us make more money. And they've, the business yeah, and they've was making more money than it did when he was ever a wrestler. Yeah. And they've done that before over the years. They would bring people back when they needed them to bring ratings. That, up that's not the case. Yeah. He came back because he wanted to. And he wanted to, to prove a point. And, and he's done that. Um, I can see him going back Hollywood uh, after WrestleMania and, you know, just taking another uh, sabbatical. Like, it's hard to do that and be on the board of the company. Like, he's above the company. Mm -hmm. The company that he's on the board for owns the WWE, owns UFC, owns the World Food Championships, and so on and so on and so on. So uh, it, it's it's pretty cool to see somebody that's as powerful and connected as he is uh, come back into our sport and not give it life, but help further it along. And I think that he's doing a good job of it. What do you think about creatively? He comes back. It looks like we're going to get Rock and Roman at WrestleMania this year. People rebel because they want to see Cody Rhodes in that spot. And so they have to pivot in a different direction. And we are where we are now, where we have Rock and Roman. They're together. They're on the heel side. What What do you think about him coming in and the, the direction that that main storyline has taken going into WrestleMania this weekend? I, I think it's great. I think it's, it's good for business. Did There's you, a people in pro wrestling that weren't wrestling fans that are watching to see what was going to happen. Yeah. And I mean, but when he initially came back and it looked like they were going to do rock and Roman and people were upset about that, where, where was your mind on that? Were you in the mindset of, okay. that's what I wanted three years ago on busted open before there was a thought of, uh, Roman Reigns was Roman Reigns, but he wasn't a tribal chief. He wasn't doing what he's doing now. I was like, man, how cool would it be for Roman Reigns to, you know, really get a leg up on this thing and then challenge The Rock for the battle of supremacy for the Samoan dynasty? And there was no name to it back then. And then they all of this stuff, I saw this three, three and a half years ago. So there's nothing new for me. It's documented. You can go back to the w, to the uh, Sirius XM archives and hear Buster. When I said it, Dave LaGreca lost his mind. <laughs> lost it. When yeah. doesn't he lose his mind, though? Well, he really lost his mind when he got an emotional investment with Cody. And... Uh, they started the the take when 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 he thought that the Rock was gonna go the Wrestle Roman at WrestleMania and Cody was gonna get Ixnay. The Rock even brought him up. The Rock showed footage of him in his bathrobe on TV when yeah. he was flipping his lids. So yeah, yeah, he yeah. was very emotional. The Cody Crybabies. Uh, well, and, that's and what he just says. So you know, we're doing a tailgate on Sunday. Um. At two o'clock. Okay. At Lincoln Financial. They sold a thousand pink robes. People are gonna come up there with pink robes on in support of the Cody Crybaby. Oh boy. How you know how ignorant that is? Oh boy. And, but it happened. That's pro wrestling. Like our people stick to our people. I love yeah. it. Yeah. No, I mean, people were, that's why I wanted to ask you about it, because I, I thought of Dave, and there were a lot of people who were who were very upset about that, and it was interesting, because I didn't think that The Rock would want to take on the role of being the bad guy. I didn't think he would want to come out and get booed. The Rock is a heel. Yeah. Well, he's like, showing that, yeah. I mean, he's in real by life. nature. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> Are there any stories you would like to share that, we don't, that we're not aware of? Something about The Rock that Besides we don't know. all the times that he made me late, and I got fined about... 1500 bucks because 
we were at the gym waiting because he had to shave. So yeah, uh, well, has he offered to pay back the the fines? Man, that dude ain't paying nothing yeah. back. Oh man, nor would I ask him for nothing. Yeah, I didn't ask nobody for nothing. Like you know, as long as you owe me, I'll never be broke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to ask you this because what one thing that I am going to be getting into here is running down the WrestleMania card for night one and night two, and I don't know if you are limited on time or if you are able to stick around for oh you got a few more minutes don't Uh, okay all right well then i want to shoot to the main events because while i have you here i want to get your thoughts on this because we have the main event on night one is what they're calling the biggest tag team match in wwe history you've got the rock you've got roman reigns taking on cody rhodes and seth rollins if cody and seth win the match on night two fair fight between cody and roman if rock and roman win then it's bloodline rules, anything goes, and it could be mass chaos. Starting with night one, what's your prediction? How does that main event go down? Uh, How does it go down, and what would you like to see? Yeah, because I was going to say that's two different questions. Um, What I feel like is going to go down uh, is the bloodline will win. Uh, The match will be bloodline rules. Um, with Rock and, I mean, with Roman and Cody, and there will be mass hysteria. What I would like to see happen, uh, I would like to see just that. I, I, I feel like the more irons you have in the fire and the more you have, you know, the Usos running in after their match is done and Solo coming in, and maybe we see other people in the family. You know, maybe you see Atta, Dwayne's mom, come out while he's acting up and go hmm. walk. He ain't got no choice but to. Well, he's been he was saying a lot of stuff about Cody's mom. So maybe you know we, what I'm saying? Maybe mom- Mamas don't give a damn. Oh, no, no. I agree. No, no. They don't care. Agendas, agendas don't matter when mama comes in. They'll, they'll, they'll set you straight real quick. You know, they'll say, shoot, it happened to me. My mama <laughs> set me straight a couple of times. Yeah. You know, and in wrestling, set me straight. So, like, there's so much that can happen that, you know, just speculating. Um, but are you in the camp of someone who would like to see Roman's reign continue, or do you think this is this is the time? No, I want it to end. You want it to end? Yeah, I want it to end. Yeah. I feel like Cody winning gives new life um, and and it's going to give more versatility to the title. Um, if Roman keeps going, time-wise, he can last longer than Hogan's reign, his, his best reign. But I feel like you got to defend it every 30 days the way it was in the old days. You know, uh, Roman is not defending it every 30 days. So, you know, what's the use of, you know, holding on to it? Well, I mean, he's had, I think, five or six matches all of last year. So there are a lot of people who feel like, okay, if Cody doesn't win it now, what does that say for him as a top baby face in the company? Two years in a row, yeah. he goes in there and loses. Yeah, you, you know, it's not going to kill him off. No. But... The narrative of what's more important is going to be painted towards Roman. Mm -hmm. He is Mark Henry. Again, he is going to be partaking in a master's class, part of Busted Open Radio at Xfinity Live starting at 5 o'clock today. But his night is only just getting started because Rumble, baby. Because Remix Rumble, the wrestling nightclub, 21 and over. Uh, He's doing a meet and greet. I know that's sold out. 1635 back entrance. Market Street. Uh, the event begins at 8 p.m. And during that event, Mark is going to be doing a special guest DJ set. He's going to be up all night. He's going to be partying with every. You're going to be in a room full of wrestling fans drinking. You know that, right? So there's a lot of songs that that they just go together. Hey, you, you heard Roman Reigns' theme, right? Of course. Have you ever heard Justin Timberlake? Um, what's that? Cry Me a River. Or- like you heard them together? No, it's absolutely nuts. They sound exactly alike. 
I mean, with the only difference is is like a top hat sound, like a. That's the only difference. Is this some of what we can expect tonight at the you event? Oh man, you're gonna hear it all. You giving it away? I'm not giving it away. People gonna pay. You gotta pay to play, baby. Well, you could you could tease them a little bit, give them a little taste of what they can expect at least. Kind of music. You know what? Um, Undertake a little John mix. Can't See that? That's two names I never expected to be. Yeah, I know you together. didn't. Never. I know you didn't. Never. That's more reason to show up. <laughs> right. See what that's gonna sound like. That's right. That's right. It's, it's some craziness. That's right. It's craziness. Eight p.m. Remix Rumble again. He is a WWE Hall of Famer. He is a co-host of Busted Open Radio on Sirius XM. He is all elite. He is all of these things. He is the one and only Mark Henry. This has been a pleasure. Thank you so man, much. Thank for you, man. Being with me, man. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go. Welcome back, boys. Welcome back. How cool was that Mark Henry interview, man? He was awesome. Mark was awesome. And again, uh, he's going to be DJing later tonight. I'm going to DJ. This is, my, this is my DJ session right here. And the reason I came here to the Duncan Music Lounge, and I thank them again for having me, you know, when I told them that I do predictions every year before WrestleMania, they said, why don't you come on down here and you could do it here and we'll get some people in here. I said, that sounds like a great idea, especially for this WrestleMania, because it just feels to me there's a certain excitement, I think, going into this mania that hasn't been there before. I'm sure The Rock has something to do with that. I have friends who don't even really watch much anymore who are like, oh, hey, what time does uh, WrestleMania start? I said, it's actually two nights. And they're like, what? I go, yeah, it's two nights now. But it's amazing when I look at this WrestleMania, if you think about where we were two months ago or three months ago, as far as where things looked like they were going, Cody and Roman seemed to be the direction. Seth and Punk seemed to be the direction. It looked like Brock Lesnar was going to come back in the Royal Rumble and end up wrestling Gunther at WrestleMania. No Brock, no Punk in the ring. And then we all know what happened with the Cody and the Roman stuff. We we still ended up back there. But it's pretty incredible to see where we are now. What I want to do is I have the lineup, and I think this may be, this was the rumored match order as well. But we'll see. I'm sure that'll change. But we're going to start with WrestleMania Night 1. And I'm going to run through this card here, give you my thoughts and predictions. And if you want to chime in, I mean, we'll do questions at the end, but if you want to chime in, feel free. Uh, it sounds like they're going to be kicking off WrestleMania Saturday with the women's world title match uh, between Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley. Becky has said she wants to open night one, so she probably pitched for it. It looks like that's going to happen. I am a fan of Rhea Ripley. I like Becky Lynch. Rhea's been champion for a year. I will say I think her reign as champion has been very underwhelming. I think back to the past year, I, I can't really think of any match that stands out to me. Like, oh, that, that was a great match that she had. Yeah, with Charlotte Flair at last year's WrestleMania. So, and I don't blame her for that. I think the run has been very underwhelming. That said, I don't think that she should win this match. I don't think that she is going to win this match. I'm going with Rhea Ripley to retain i think there are other bigger matches for her as the year goes on i could think of i could think of at least one person on the other show that i'd like to see her in the ring with maybe that's the wrestlemania match next year but how, how are we feeling overall rhea ripley retaining a wrestlemania i think that sounds sounds about right there you go it's like, like mommy's on top there you go. We're going to have little kids talking about mommy being on top. That's a horrible image. All right. We have a six-pack ladder match for the tag team titles, undisputed tag team titles. It is the Judgment Day defending against DIY, Miz and R-Truth, Pete Dunn and Tyler Bate, and A-Town Down Under, which is Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. They made it very clear on TV, that Michael Cole said it the other night, that both sets of belts are going to be hanging from the ceiling. The match does not end until you pull down both sets of belts. That sounds to me like they're setting up for a split. I don't think the titles should be split. I know some people do. I look at the tag team division. They've made progress. I think individually, you're going to be in the same situation you were before, where you're going to have the same three or four teams. Until they can really beef up the divisions, I think, individually on each show, I personally am in favor of keeping them together. But I think they're going to split them. I thought when this was 
not a ladder match. I thought it was going to be a straight tag team match that they were setting up for R-Truth to have a big moment. He was finally going to get, he's going to beat Damian Priest and get his moment and win the belts. I still think he's going to. I think Miz and R-Truth are going to, probably with the Raw titles, pull those down. If I had to pick who the other winner would be, they pull down the other set of belts. I see it being Waller in theory. And I think that they would probably be decent heel champions on SmackDown. So if I'm right, and if they split them, those are the two teams that I'm going with. I think it's Miz and R-Truth for the Raw brand that I think Waller in theory pulled down the belts on SmackDown. But what do you think about splitting the belts? Yay or nay? Uh, yay, mostly, mostly yay. Nay, he says nay. Why nay? Son of okay. death in the tag team division support. There's more teams that were teams instead of individuals together. Mm-hmm. So you'd have to. Yeah, and that's my that's my logic as well. I mean, until you can get some more teams, I, I just don't see the point in it. Yeah, go ahead. Making new tag belts anyway. Oh, that's been a rumor. I think there are tag belts that were made. I think they've been sitting in a vault or a warehouse somewhere for a year um, because there were some belt people, like belt makers, who were saying that a year ago. So they probably have all kinds of belts that they made just in case, and then for whatever reason, they didn't use them. So I'm sure that's the case, that they have them. I I wish they would do that. I wish they would just have one set and have just floating champions, Uh, but we'll see. The uh, Motor City Machine Guns coming again, maybe? If they just left TV. They did. Motor City. Yeah. Motor Motor City Machine Guns are free agents as of April 1st. And one thing I, and I was going to mention this later, but, you know, I work with House of Glory, which is one of the bigger independent promotions on the East Coast. Then we've had Alex Shelley in a few times. Uh, Alex Shelley is going to be on our show tomorrow. He's the wrestling revolver champion. But anyway, so he's a tremendous talent. And Chris Saban's been around forever. He's a great talent as well. I think they'll thrive wherever they go. It feels to me, I, I just feel like AEW would be the better fit for them. If it were up to me, I personally would love to see them in WWE just to see how they do. But I feel like for their style and and the talent that they would be working with, I feel like AEW is a better fit. So I, I honestly don't know where they're going to land. Maybe if I see him tomorrow, I'll ask him. I'm sure he'll tell me. I'm, I'm sure he'll tell me. We have another tag match. We have Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee teaming up to take on Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. Not enough booze. I said Dominic's name. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think it's going to be a great match. It's a little weird how out of nowhere, we're just back to Rey and Dom. It just, he showed up one day, interfered in the match, and we're just back to Rey and Dom. So that's a little strange. I, I thought they would save Rey and Escobar one-on-one for Mania, but they gave it to us on tv this feels to me i just and i think part of it also is when i look over my predictions it would be a little too heel heavy the other way i'm going with mysterio and dragon lee for the win dragon lee is somebody who i think triple h has some high hopes for they were pushing him pretty well there for a while then they got away from it i don't know why i don't know why he vanished for five or six weeks but i feel like he is someone that they are banking on for the future and i just Feels like a babyface win to me. I don't really have any other gut instinct other than that. So, how are we feeling as far as uh, babyface is going over here? Yeah. Stop. You think Ray, you think Ray pins Dom? Well, we had that last year. Yeah, I, I, I think Dom gets the win. I think I think Dom wins. Okay, so you think this time it's going to be Dom pinning his uh, deadbeat dad? Let's see the old LWO command. Yeah, that that that's true. Legato, right? Where are they going to be? That's true. That's why Carlito makes a big move here on a turn. The way they, they've been, they beat him on his comeback. He's got to do something big in this moment. Oh, that's, that's why I was on the fence a little bit because I could see a Carlito heel turn, you know, given that Dragon Lee was just announced as the new member. Yeah, you know, maybe Carlito looks at it and goes, hey, you overlooked me and you went with him instead. And he wasn't even part of the group. And that's how the heels win. So yeah, I, I could very easily be wrong on that one, but I'm I'm gonna stick with my gut. My gut is uh, Ray and Dragon Lee. Dom's cooking up something. All that damn. You know, he's he's got that mullet too. She's getting longer by the week. You just wonder if they're building to a hair match at some point. Hair versus, hair versus mask. SummerSlam, maybe. Then we have brother versus brother. We have Jimmy Uso against Jay Uso. We have Yeet against No Yeet. Yeet and no yeet. I actually feel 
that Jimmy needs this win more than Jay does. Thank you. Jay Uso is super over. You know, like if Jay, I'm telling you, Mark Henry left already, but if he was here, I would tell him, I guarantee you that if you go to that event tonight at the nightclub and they're playing wrestling songs all night, as soon as Jay's music hits, everybody's going to be going like this. Everybody's going to be doing like, like, no, no, they'll do that during the entrance. They'll do that during the entrance, but he's super over. Jimmy has not attained that same level of stardom that, that Jay has. And I also don't think that this is going to be the end of it. I think this is only the beginning. This this reminds me in a lot of ways of Brett Owen. That was the first match. And then we got more that came after that. So I, I, I just can't imagine that this is a one and done here. And I think if that's the case, Jimmy needs to win. And, you know, that could also feed into the bloodline stuff, right? They picked up a big win. And so now Rock and Roman are feeling confident. Um, but, yeah, I, I it could be backlash. It could be another pay-per-view. This is not going to be the only match. Uh, but I think Jimmy needs it more. I'm going with... Jimmy Uso for the win. Then we have another tag match. This is a six-person tag match. We have Bianca Belair. We have Jade Cargill, her first WrestleMania. And Naomi taking on Asuka, Kyrie Sane, and Dakota Kai. If you're an Asuka fan, get ready. Because she has a reverse Undertaker streak going. This is going to be 0 for 6, I believe. Because she ain't winning this match. Bianca has a streak as well. Well, Well, actually, there's another streak, too, that's over. Because up to this point, every match Bianca has had has been a title match. That's why I thought they were going to do the women's tag team titles. I I can't imagine this is anything other than Jade, Bianca, and Naomi getting the win. I just, I can't fathom it. It just They got the best nickname right now, though, the Power Buff Girls. Is that what they're calling themselves? The Power Buff Girls? (laughs) great i'm not going to call them that but if the internet is calling them that then okay thank you the salt in the wound and have jade get the pin and tony khan's gonna be sitting at home angry just like how did i let her he's already yeah <laughs> and i don't, honestly at this point going into this weekend with everything he's got going on i don't think triple h cares i think that's the furthest thing from his mind although we know what aw is thinking but uh, that's we know what they're thinking about after uh, that opening segment last night. But let's get into the Intercontinental Championship. We have Gunther defending against Sami Zayn. I like Sami Zayn. Have nothing against him. Great moment in the WrestleMania main event last year. Almost brought a tear to my eye to see him and Kevin Owens celebrating at the end of the show. This is not the match that I wanted at WrestleMania. This is not the match I wanted at WrestleMania. This should be... Gunther and Chad Gable for the Intercontinental title. And Gable's daughter should be parked right there in the front row. The story was there. They didn't go with it. And so now we have a situation where I, I, they haven't said, but I'm assuming Gable will be there. And maybe he'll be in Sammy's corner. He'll be like his coach or something. But I, I just don't see Sammy Zayn winning. I don't see, I don't see it happening. And I don't see where it really does anybody any good. He's been intercontinental champion before. He's done big things before. This would almost, it would feel underwhelming to me if he was the one to finally slay this man and take the title from him. Now, if you watch that vignette from the Performance Center on Monday, clearly somebody watched Rocky Three the night before. They had Rocky Three vibes. There was some Rocky Four stuff going on there. I would like to think that this is the Rocky Four story, but Sammy is not Rocky. Sammy is Apollo creed and gable is rocky and so maybe if he dies he dies if he dies he dies so maybe it's a situation where gunther wins gable's out there sammy is half dead maybe maybe the beating continues when the match is over gable comes in and we can get a little we can get a little face off you know but tease the fact that they're going to come back around to it that story still has life to it it might not be at wrestlemania but gable and gunther i think is still I think should be the destination here. Some people may have other names in mind. Oh, he's not big enough. He, you know, he shouldn't be the one. Whatever. But I, I think that may be the way that they're going with this. I mean, Gable's Gable's involved here. This is going somewhere. My fear is he's just going to turn heel. Then you've squandered just a great story. Well, that's what a lot of people think. Ow. Throw in the towel. Rocky Fourth. Throw in the towel. 
throw in the towel. Well, either way, I, I don't get the sense that anybody here really thinks Gunther is going to lose. Step is plan was supposed to be Gunther and Brock. Mm-hmm. At that moment, at that time, I did not see Brock beating Gunther. But there was going to, that was going to be like a yeah. to mm-hmm. So there's no way you're going to say or make me believe that you're saying these things. Yeah. So if, if the plan was for Gunther to win anyway, then then I'm okay with them going with Sammy because at least they're not just beating Gable for a second or third or fourth time or whatever it is. Um, but I, I think that's logical that they weren't planning on taking the belt off of him yet anyway. Yeah, somebody asked me a question. I answered this on my show. And they said, if I could add a, a stipulation to any of the belts or if I can create my own belt and it had a stipulation, what would it be? And I like the idea of having the Intercontinental title and the U.S. title, where if you are champion for a year, one full year, you at that point, you don't have to. You can kind of hold it in your back pocket. But at that point, you get to cash that in for a shot at the world title of your brand, whatever brand that you're on. So I guess it's kind of similar. TNA has a gimmick like that. Option C. But like, at least, you know, add that little stipulation there because you get to a point like Gunther. It just feels to me like, why is he still the Intercontinental Champion? Like, he beat everybody everybody there is to beat. The only thing left is for him to lose. That would be a way for him not to lose. Because if he's still champion, you know, maybe it's 15 months in and he goes, you know what? We're heading into SummerSlam. Time is right. I want that World Heavyweight title. And he hands over, you know, the Intercontinental. Bash in Berlin, which is only a few weeks after SummerSlam. That I think winning a world title. Possible. I think I think there's a better chance of him winning the the world title on that show. But yeah, either way, he's gonna have a big match on that show. I can't imagine he doesn't. Yeah, I have him I have him retaining. And then we get to the main event. We have seven matches on night one, six on night two. I, I actually think night one is the stronger of the two lineups. Uh and it culminates in the main event, which is Rock and Roman Reigns. Taking on Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. This is Rock's first match, technically, in eight years. But I don't count that match. I don't count that match. So this will be Rock's, as far as I'm concerned, this is Rock's first match since the last time that I saw him live. I was at that WrestleMania, and I thought that match sucked. (laughs) The second match with Rock and John Cena, which is the match where Rock got hurt, tore every muscle on his body. It was finisher spam at the end I mean, it was just ridiculous yeah well r- well not at that point it rained earlier in the day by by that point it was dry so now rock is he's 10 or 11 years older i think physically he's bigger uh than he was even then and we, we saw him on monday night he got physical where he was taking bumps and selling and he, yeah, he looked okay i don't think he, he hurt himself so that's good but Everybody that is excited about WrestleMania that maybe isn't a week-to-week fan is going to be tuned in to see him because they're excited The Rock is back because they probably grew up watching The Rock and all those guys. So I think it's going to be a big deal, I think, for a lot of people. I am very curious what kind of entrance he gets. I could, I could, You remember in the old days when he had the Hollywood intro and you saw the helicopter in the video? I could see him actually coming out of a freaking helicopter. I think Charlotte Flair did that for WrestleMania one year. Like, The Shield. Okay, yeah. So he's going to do something big, and I think it's going to be great. But when you get down to brass tacks, the stipulations are very simple. If the bloodline wins, it's bloodline rules on Sunday. If the bloodline loses, it's a fair fight on Sunday. We're at the point where I think it would be boring for it to be a fair fight. I don't want a fair fight. I know exactly the outcome I want, but I don't want a fair fight. So I have Rock and Roman winning, and I think the way to go is you have The Rock pin Cody Rhodes. And I think that's the right way to go. Poor Seth Rollins has already been buried 17 feet beneath the surface. He doesn't need to be buried anymore. If Rock beats Cody, whether it happens or not, what you've done now is you've set up a match for later in the year, next year, SummerSlam, you know, whatever. I mean, you look at the buildup to WrestleMania this year, you would think Rock was already wrestling Cody. Does anybody, I mean, does it really feel like Cody and Roman is the match they've been building towards? Uh, Not if you watch the TV, it doesn't. So I think that's the smart way. I think that business-wise, that's the smart thing to do. Uh, And I think that's the way it's going to go. And then Rock is going to take his belt and he's going to hand it to Mama Rhodes. 
And that will feed into night two. But before we get to night two, I want to give a shout out to Suplex Vintage Wrestling. Gentlemen right here, the man himself. Uh, it is your one-stop shop, wrestling shop in Philadelphia. They've got all kinds of cool things. They've got vintage clothing. They've got toys and replica belts and all kinds of memorabilia games. Uh, you really should check it out in person. It is at 628 South Street. They are going to be hosting a block party outside their shop uh, this Saturday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., there may be special guests there. There's going to be a ton of wrestling fans there. It's going to be insanity. So make sure you check that out. And you could also find them online at suplexsvw.com. Suplex Vintage Wrestling. Hopefully one of these days I'll be able to mosey over there myself and uh, and check it out. Because that's right up my alley. Vintage stuff. I am vintage. That's my way of saying I'm old. But now let's talk about WrestleMania Sunday. WrestleMania Night 2. Uh, and again, this is the... Now, this was from Meltzer the other day, so who the hell knows if it's real or not. But he had what he uh, claimed was the match order here. So it looks like they're going to kick off. And I thought this was common sense. Kick off with the World Heavyweight title match uh, on night two between Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre. We have CM Punk on commentary for the match. I cannot imagine he does not end up being involved in some way, even if it's just a distraction you know, physically, I don't know what he can and can't do, but he's going to be there. I'm sure he's going to play a role here in this match. And I think now I am a huge fan of Drew McIntyre these last five or six months. I mean, the guy is he's just on fire. He's doing the best work of his career. He's enjoying it. Every time he trolls CM Punk, the visceral joy on this man's face is just a sight to behold. And I think that in some form or fashion, he's going to end up costing Drew McIntyre for all of his trolling, for just all the burns, you know, you, you're straight edge, you don't drink, you don't do drugs, yet you're in rehab all the time. <laughs> What's up with that? All timeline. All timeline. But I also think it feeds into something else. WWE made an announcement a few days ago. Uh, they're bringing back Clash at the Castle. And Clash at the Castle was in Cardiff two years ago. Now it's going to be in Glasgow. It's going to be in Scotland. Drew McIntyre is the Scottish, what is he, the psychopath? Is that what they call him? Okay. Everyone has to have a nickname. So he's the Scottish psychopath. He's going to be on that show. And everyone's talking about his contract status. Oh, he hasn't re-signed yet. They got him locked down. He may not have put pen to paper, but they would not be uh, going there if they didn't think they had him locked down. So what I'm wondering is if they might be saving a title win for Clash at the Castle. You could have Punk factor in here. Punk gets a little measure of revenge. Rollins wins. You come back in June. It's June 15th is the date of the event. And you could have McIntyre win the title on that show. And that that realistically is how I see things going. But I don't think that uh, Seth Rollins is leaving as the world heavyweight champion. So he may get a win against Drew McIntyre. Uh, but there's a certain someone who's been walking around now for many months with a money in the bank briefcase, and he has looked like a complete idiot <laughs> on multiple occasions where he could have cashed in and he didn't. A couple of times he tried to cash in, he got kicked in the face, kicked in the balls. I mean, it's just one thing after another. But he kind of teased something on TV the other night. And he said that WrestleMania is going to be a big night for the Judgment Day. He said WrestleMania is going to be a big night individually for all of us. And Rhea Ripley is like, you have something you want to tell us? And it didn't go any further than that. So maybe they just want you to believe that. But I think he's had it for so long. I mean, yes, he could always cash in the night after, you know, on Raw. Right. But it's WrestleMania or bust to me. It's like you've been you've been waiting for so long. If you're going to do something with this guy, this is the time to do it. And you go from punk costing McIntyre and everybody's happy and Rollins is the champion. And then what did The Rock say? What did The Rock say in one of his social media promos a few weeks ago? He said Rollins was running his mouth about him. You're a clown emoji and all this stuff. And he said, keep running your mouth and I'll make your title disappear. Well, he's been running his mouth. He's He's part of the whole thing. And so I think it's a situation where you know, maybe Rock, you know, he works his magic and Damian Priest finally cashes in and he wins the world heavyweight title. And he walks out of there as the champion because they're going to lose their titles on night one, which will then clear the way for him to win the world title on night two. 
And then you could work a whole Judgment Day storyline where he's the champion now. They're probably all happy, but you know they probably won't be happy for very long. And in the next few months, you could start maybe the the disintegration within the Judgment Day because the Judgment Day also has been, you know, it's like where do you go from here? How much longer are they going to be together for? This doesn't feel like a long term thing at this point. So that's where I think the world title is uh, is going to end. But how how are we feeling about a Money in the Bank cash in here? A successful Money in the Bank cash in. Here's a question: Do you think the Money in the Bank is still good as far as working somebody, or you think they're still the turn? Because oh, you know, make sure this guy wins by the by the time. Like, you, like, I I personally, I think it needs to take a break. I really think the Money in the Bank needs to go away for a while. I think it became a thing where, okay, we're to do it every year. I know why they do it. I mean, it's a big pay-per-view for them. So they're not gonna they're not gonna get rid of it. So I understand it. But as a fan, I just think it's such a tired concept. I think it's it's kind of like Chris Jericho. You know? Very tired, needs to go away for a while. Then you can bring it back. Maybe it'll be fresh again. So that's kind of how I feel. The actual money in the bank match is always so much fun. It's fun, but you know what? Honestly, you know, it is fun, but a lot of them also kind of blend together. You know, it's like at some point, like what how, how, what more can you do? They come up with all these elaborate spots and everything, and it's like, wow. But again, I just think as far as the gimmick itself, I think it would benefit from taking a break for a while. What What explanation they would come up with for that, I don't know, but that's just how I feel. Mm-hmm. Baron Corbin fail at cash in the We've seen Baron Corbin fail at a lot of things, unfortunately for him. He seems like a nice guy, but I mean blocked me on Twitter, but go away from the world title to challenge the US title. Mm-hmm. He only could see the reigns with the bloodline at his side. Because it's been a scenario too where as you said, the to take a break, so they can actually use Damian Priest as um unfortunately scapegoat as why he needs to go away. Because he said WrestleMania you're bust. If Drew McIntyre has his moment to feed Seth Rollins due to CM Punk's interference unintentionally on, on Seth when he's trying to go for Punk, trying to go for Drew, sorry, could that be a scenario where they can hold off? Or is it just once it's a bust, just kind of get rid of the concept basically? So you're saying if he if he cashes in and loses, that that is just sort of the end of the of the gimmick for a while? Yeah, I mean, if he cashes in and fails after this entire time, I just think it's going to do more harm than good. I, I just kind of feel like he he should win. I think that they are very high on him. I think really going back to the Bad Bunny match last year, I mean, there was a lot of talk about how he impressed a lot of people in the company. I, I, I can't believe I'm even saying this, but that was one of my favorite matches of the entire year. I thought it was great. And yeah, there were some AEW fans who were like ready to pick up their torches and pitchforks and come after me for saying you would put Bad Bunny above Will Ospreay, or as Adam Copeland would say, Will Osprey. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think they're very high on him. I I don't think that they would want to damage him in that way because I feel it would be damaging if he cashes in and fails after all this time, all the teasing and everything else. Yeah, maybe they have a, a Judgment Day story in mind where it'll make sense. I just think it would be too damaging for him. Cashing in mid-match like Rollins did nine years ago. Yeah, and I think that would be stupid. Like, if I have the Money in the Bank briefcase and I can wait until the end of a, of a 15-minute WrestleMania match when the guy's already done and spent, then why would you cash in in the middle of it? You could. You could wait until a moment where they're both down. It's possible. I just think Punk is the story as far as that match. If he's going to do anything, like it's about Punk, and then any Money in the Bank thing would come after the fact. That's that's the feeling I have. <laughs> then we have just added a few days ago a Philadelphia street fight. Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits take on the Final Testament. I'm getting vibes from Chicago from WrestleMania 13 when they had a Chicago street fight. And it was Ahmed Johnson and LOD against the Nation of Domination. And they literally, uh, it might have been Hawk, who literally brought the kitchen sink out to the ring with him. And they just beat the hell out of each other with all kinds of weapons and the sink. And it was a fun brawl for what it was. I think that's what this is going to be. I think that they have, adding the stipulation was was smart. Because if you just put these guys in a six-man tag, like, boring. You know, here at least they'll be able to just have a fight 
the way they built this up, like these guys should want to kill each other. So I think that'll make the match better. Uh, I am a Bobby Lashley guy, and I don't think that what Karrion Cross is doing is working right now. I want him to succeed. He, I mean, he seems like a nice guy. I've seen him and Scarlett. Uh, you know, on the WWE YouTube channel, they do some out of character stuff sometimes, and there's there's personality there that they haven't tapped into. They keep doing the spooky stuff and the tarot cards, and I just find it boring. It's just not working. So I would rather the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley just kind of finish the deal here uh, because I'm just happy Bobby has a match. He got left off the card altogether last year, and it looked like that was going to happen again up until this week. Uh, I got them going over in this match. Then we have just plain old singles match. AJ Styles, one-on-one with LA Knight. There you go. You didn't boo for Dom, but you did the LA Knight, yeah. What a, fic, what a, weird, what a weird crowd. So we had LA Knight go to this man's house and fight with him on his front lawn. We got police dash cam footage of it. We had LA Knight the other night in disguise. And then he beat up AJ and chased him into the crowd. It just, there's nothing wrong with what they've done. It just feels very secondary. It just feels like it doesn't matter. And LA Knight is a guy I would have said a few months ago, what do you think they have in mind for him at WrestleMania? Logan Paul. And they opted not to do that. Um, and it's weird to say that because I, AJ Styles is great, but it it feels like an undercard match is what it feels like. Yeah. Watch on LA night. It's like Times Guy and it's only a few months ago. And like I just feel like they well, he's still over. Don't get it twisted. No, he's definitely over. Yeah. I just feel like that United States Championship match with Logan Paul is the way to go. And like coming out of WrestleMania, the world titles, both world titles are gonna be like the scenes are gonna be so congested. I just feel like there's no other place for him to go coming out of WrestleMania. Like he should be the United States champion right now. Well, there is a place for him to go coming out of WrestleMania, which I'll I'll talk about in a second. I think AJ Styles is winning. I have AJ Styles going. I have him going over here because I think, kind of like Jimmy and Jay, this is not the end. And I think that they may also assume that people just think LA Knight's going to win, and maybe there's a little bit of like, let's throw him a curveball here. Um, I think that this is going to go all the way to Backlash, and I think they'll blow it off at Backlash. LA Knight will get the win. To your point, I still am holding out hope, and I still think that the direction is L.A. Knight and Logan Paul. And I think they get there at SummerSlam. Because Logan Paul's going to have a big match on that show. He's an Ohio guy. They're in Cleveland. So he'll he'll have a big match there. Um, so I, I'm still hopeful that they will get there. Because I think the promos would be, would be great, you know, as far as, like, on TV. But I think AJ and, – and look, AJ, AJ needs a win, too. I mean, let's be honest there. When was the last time AJ Styles won anything, anything at all? I mean, come on. AJ is as physically big as I've ever seen him. He's on the rock diet. I, I don't know what he's been doing, but like he is jacked. Um, and it would be nice to see him get a win. I do think at the end of this, though, LA Knight, LA Knight goes over. But I, I, I see it a backlash, not a WrestleMania. So that might be the uh, the outcome that shocks people the most, maybe. Because I would assume most people think LA Knight's probably going to win that match. I'm not one of those people. Speaking of Logan Paul, we have Logan Paul defending the United States title in a triple threat match against Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. I think it's going to be a very good match. Logan Paul's matches, for the most part, are very good. As are Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. I, so I think you got a good mix of talent there. Randy Orton winning the U.S. title, I don't really see the point of that. Kevin Owens winning it is a little more plausible, but even there, I, I don't really see the point of it. I think this being a triple threat match sets up Orton and, and Owens almost cancel each other out, you know, and Logan Paul will will eke out a win somehow. He'll find a way. I think he holds on to that title until SummerSlam. I'd like to see him drop it there to L.A. Knight. So I'm got Logan Paul winning this match. Then we have the other women's title match. It sounds like if this order is correct, it sounds like they may be going on before the main event. EO Sky defending her women's championship against the winner of the 2024 Royal Rumble in Bailey. I, I went back and forth on this, and we have a lot of Bailey fans here. Okay. I like the fact that she's finally getting her moment. 
you know, because Charlotte has got, I mean, Charlotte wakes up in the morning and has a moment, you know, Sasha's had some moments. Becky's had a lot of moments, you know, from that original four, I feel like Bailey is the one who kind of gets overlooked a lot. And she's been a heel now for five years. Now she's a baby face again. I was at the Royal Rumble and the people cheered and went nuts when she won. It was a great moment. You could tell that there were people who were just genuinely happy for her. And I think people would be genuinely happy if she went into WrestleMania here and won the championship. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. And I am going to pick Io Sky uh, to retain her title. Part of it is also the match order here. I feel like if this does go on before the main event, and if the main event goes the way that I think it's going to go, I don't think they want to have back-to-back title changes like that with like the big moment for that person. Face killing. Yeah, I, I, I just again, if this order is correct, I just I don't I don't see it. But the other reason also is damage control is not winning on night one. So are you really going to send in damage control on night one? They get beat. You send an EO on night two, she gets beat. Yeah, I mean, you could, but I I don't know. I, I don't sense that they're ready to break them up or anything. And boy, is that really kind of bitching them out? You know, if you if you do that. Yeah, but again, I, I just feel like it being in the position on the card that it's in, something tells me Bailey doesn't win it here. She may win it at Backlash. They may be saving it for that. And we've had situations like that at WrestleMania over the years where you know, they save it for the next show. You know, they famously did that back in 2000 at WrestleMania, where Triple H was the first heel to ever go over in the main event. And the very next month, they just put the belt on The Rock. And then the very next month, they put the belt on Triple H. And then the very next month, they put the belt on The Rock. This is why we have Roman Reigns now, three and a half years as the world champion. Which leads me to the main event. Which is for the undisputed title, it is Cody Rhodes challenging Roman Reigns. Will it be bloodline rules? Will it be a fair fight? As I said, I hope it's bloodline rules. I think it makes it a lot more interesting. Um, It doesn't change my opinion of how this should go and how this is going to go. I think that this is Cody's moment. I think we have reached the end of the line with this Roman Reigns run. You can put your finger in the air all you want to. It's not going to go ahead. Raise it high. Raise it high. You'd be hailing a cab with that same finger at the end of the show. I don't think it changes the outcome. You cannot have, you absolutely, you cannot have Cody Rhodes go in there two years in a row and lose. Unless you just want to kill off any credibility of him being like a top baby face. Like he'll be fine. It's not like he's going to be uh, jerking the curtain if he loses a WrestleMania. But I, I think people are going to look at him a lot differently. If he goes in there and doesn't win and he's doing interviews this week, he he was on the Today Show the other day and he said that, uh, you know, if I don't win on Sunday, maybe I'll do commentary or something like maybe I should just do something else. He's been beat. He's been beat down for the last month. But, you know, you go in to WrestleMania last year with this idea that, OK, he's going to he's going to be the one and he's going to beat Roman Reigns and then he fails. He wins the Royal Rumble two years in a row, which nobody else has done in 27 years, right? It's a big deal. He's up there now with Austin and Hogan, and then there's Cody and Shawn Michaels, right? Can't forget Shawn Michaels. Austin, of course, won three of them, but he's Austin, so we'll get to to him in a second. But I I feel like there's just no other other outcome here. So here's how I see it going down. I think we end up with bloodline rules. I think Jey Uso is going to come out to fight off Jimmy. Off they go. Because, again, Jimmy wins night one. There's still an issue there. So that's why Jay comes out and you keep that going. But you got the problem of Solo Sokoa. Now, I think it would be crazy if they don't repeat the spot from last year. Tease the fact that the match might end the same way. You got to do it, right? Only this time Cody kicks out. But who could come out? to neutralize the solo Sokoa threat. If only there was a guy who lost to him a few months ago. And then poor Solo, of course, has been on a losing streak ever since. He can't win a match to save his life. But, you know, he beat John Cena a few months ago. And John Cena has been doing interviews also. And every time WWE comes up, like, he's the one bringing up WrestleMania. He doesn't do that unless he's going to be there. Like, he's going to be there. The only question is, what is he going to do? Is he just going to come out and wave? 
Is this under the assumption that Seth is like too injured to come help? Like he's got beaten down so much so? Uh, this is, yes, this is under the assumption that something will happen. We will not see Rollins making his way out. Yeah, right. So that, that would be, that would be the assumption here. Cause I, I don't know about you. I don't, I don't have any interest in seeing Seth Rollins be the one to fight off the rock. Okay. No, I, I don't want to see that. But well, but John, so John Cena appears. He fights off Solo, right? Because John Cena is like, you know, fair fight for Cody, right? So off goes Solo Sokoa. So now we don't have to worry about Solo anymore. We don't have to worry about Jimmy. We don't have to worry about Solo. We don't have to worry about Heyman because he's Heyman. What's he going to do? But you got The Rock because his bloodline rules. So The Rock is out there and he's like, all right, this fucking guy over here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of this guy. And then you hear the glass shatter you hear the glass shatter you hear that disturbed song and out comes stone cold steve austin now why stone cold steve austin why not no who knows the rock better than him austin's talked about how big of a fan he is of cody he wants cody to win in a fair fight right he sees what the rock's been doing the rock's been flexing his muscle he's been making all kinds of comments so he's on standby just in case and at that moment where Rock is standing over Cody in the ring, Jey Uso's fought him off, Cena's fought him off, Rollins is not, like, Cody's got nobody. Because, you know, Dustin, I don't see Dustin uh, being a part of it. Maybe if he's in the crowd, maybe. I could see that, but not not a part of this. But out comes Austin. And we get that one, and just for nostalgia's sake, we get that one final confrontation in the ring with Rock and Austin. And one last stunner. And we see Rock go ass over tea kettle selling the stunner. That takes care of him. Austin looks down at Cody and is telling him, finish the fucking story, you know, and he leaves the ring. And now it's a fair fight. Now he's got nobody. Roman's got nobody. The authority. Now, he, he is. Stone Cold loves to fight the authority. Well, there you go. Nobody loves beating up their boss more than Stone Cold. But now we get the fair fight. We're going to get a fair fight at the end of this anyway. And Cody gets the decisive win. It's important that you don't have him like, you know, stunner Roman or like nothing should happen to Roman where Cody crawls over and gets the win. He's got to win it himself. But I think now you've set this, you've set the stage in that crowd because they're going to know, you know, they're going to know that it's coming. And then when it comes, you'll get the big reaction and you'll get the pyro, the red, white, and blue pyro in Philadelphia, 40th WrestleMania. It's the Rocky story. He finally did it. His mother's in the front row and maybe his brother and who knows who else. And you get that great moment to end WrestleMania 4. We had a great moment to end WrestleMania 10. We had a great moment at the time to end WrestleMania 20. We had a great moment to end WrestleMania 30. And I think we get the great moment to end WrestleMania 40. And then the question becomes, well, then who's his first challenger? And this goes into part, partly goes into my prediction for the LA night match, because if Cody wins the title, he's on SmackDown now. And if that's the case, I think that AJ would be a great first challenger for him. Maybe that's why he's so yoked. Maybe he knows. You know, maybe he knows he's next up and he's got to look his best. Because, you know, Randy Orton is an obvious match. You don't do that right away. Because I could see Randy Orton beating him for the belt. If Orton goes heel again at some point, and you can get a, a Cody Orton program for six months if you want, you don't do, you don't do that first. Right? The first person is going to get beat. AJ wins at Mania. That gives him a little bit of credibility back. You could set him up to be the first challenger. I think that makes sense. Uh, but that is how I see WrestleMania 40 going down. Doesn't sound unreasonable, I think, right? Don't you wish I was booking this show now? Don't you wish I was booking this show? Or there you go. You don't even have to go now. You don't even have to watch the show. I've told you what's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, that that's uh, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I'm excited for WrestleMania. I've been to eight of them. I'm not going to be at this one um, because I'll be reviewing it each night, you know, from home as soon as each night is over. But I've been to eight of them before. I've been to these big stadium shows. If you've never been before, like how many people in here are going to Mania this weekend? That's it. OK, see everybody. OK, for parking lot, right? Yeah, you don't want to deal with that. Um, if you've never been, though. You, everybody should go at least once. So it's a great experience. Like, I'll never forget, this was not one of my favorite WrestleManias, but it, it, I was awestruck when I walked in to 33 
in Orlando. It was at Camping World Stadium. And I walked in and I saw that giant globe and the roller coaster and that whole stage, which apparently cost them like $5 million. But like in person, it looked incredible. The only thing I would compare to it would be WrestleMania last year. I thought they did a tremendous job on the set. Now, I've seen leaked footage of what this year's set looks like. It it looks like it's a lot more like the Roman numerals. Um, I wish they would have gone with something like the Liberty Bell or something in the background. Yeah, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Um, but it's always it's always a good time, you know, to be a part of of WrestleMania, even if you're just watching it from home. So I'm I'm looking forward to the show. And for me, it's always you know, it's a lot of work, but it's always my biggest weekend of the year. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it and not looking forward to it at the same time. Uh, but it's going to be a good time. But you guys may have questions, so I want to turn it over to you. Now, are we now are we good as far as them just speaking out or do they need the mic? They do? Oh, okay, yeah. So if you want to just pass that around. And it doesn't have to be about mania. It could be about anything. Let's first. So my question is, is this, can you recall the last time you were excited for WrestleMania and have they done a good job building it to being like so unpredictable that you have to watch it? Like, has this really piqued your interest because of the storytelling? Yeah. I mean, I could tell you exactly when I was excited for WrestleMania. It was last year. I was, I was really pumped going into last year's show. I thought last year's WrestleMania is one of the best I've ever done. That's even with the, the crappy finish on night two i thought night one blew night two away but i think overall i mean it was an excellent show so that kind of set the bar now for what i think they need to achieve this weekend i think they've done a good job of of building the cards some matches more than others um before 39 you know the, the one that i was looking forward to the most i know which one it wasn't it wasn't 36 i know that so yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. The way you explain the main event to me makes logical sense, but as we know in pro wrestling, logic and pro wrestling don't go together. They don't go together. No. no. And everything in terms of how you explain it works. But is there any possibility, as much as you're very emphatic of what's the ending going to be at the main event, could you see them still going with Roman? Because they're trying to build that scenario where he surpasses Hogan. Look at this guy. <laughs> Look at this guy. You know, if Paul Heyman ever wants to retire, he'd be his manager, you know? <laughs> yeah, of course, there's always a possibility. I mean, and you, you have people who were talking about, and Mark Henry brought it up, Hogan. Hogan was champion the first time for 1,400-something days. And if Roman Reigns can get to September, he'll pass Hogan. Yeah, he'll pass Hogan, and instead of number four, he'll be number three. Who cares? To me, if you if your whole thing is we have to break some phony record that isn't even all that big at the expense of your creative or at the expense of this other guy who you're positioning as your top baby face, then you're you're doing something wrong. I think it would be far more damaging to Cody and for what? Like, what would be the purpose of extending this run out for another six to 12 months? We know Roman is not full-time. We know he's not going to... The Rock has been around more than he has. So that's not going to change. Like, his schedule is what it is, whether it's health-related, whether it, whatever. I mean, good for him. You know, that's the schedule he got. It doesn't make for a great champion if you're a viewer watching the show week to week. We need someone who could be full-time. Cody is that guy who can be full-time. There's a chance... I don't think it's a very big chance, and I think it would be a mistake. I got you. I got you. So, thank you. So my question is: Well, state your name to, first, so we know who we're talking to here. Oh, how you doing? There you go. So for night, how you doing? Is your name? Uh, no. no. I'm kidding. Okay. Malik is. I know. I know. Going, guys. So my question is for night two. Mm-hmm. Do you think they pull a swerve like how they did with Brock and uh, Undertaker? Like, we think that Cody's going to win, but Roman wins in the crowd. Faces just drop like how they did with Taker and Lesnar. I don't think faces would drop. I think you'd have people who were just angry and disappointed. Yeah. It wouldn't be shocked, necessarily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, there, I'll say this. 
there is the possibility, and I've thought about this, because this bloodline is huge, right? There's lots of different members of the bloodline. Right. If they wanted to introduce a new member of the bloodline, then I could see that factoring into the finish. Okay. And whether that was a Jacob Fatu, who I think is a free agent right now, and again, is somebody who has you know, worked with him before in House of Glory. He was our champion for a while. And if you've watched him in MLW, he's an unbelievable talent. I mean, mm -hmm. the guy, he, I, I've said this on commentary and I meant it. I think he is athletically the most gifted of that entire family. Like the things he can do is just incredible. So I would love to see him in WWE. I would hate for that to be the way they introduce him where it costs Cody. But if they wanted to introduce him or uh, Tama Tonga is supposedly coming in and they consider him part of their family so he may be linked up with them possibly yeah yeah i could see that i could see that but i really hope that doesn't happen right i really hope not uh with all this talk about cody mm -hmm. you would would you say well this isn't my question but either him or punk are probably the biggest defections from aew ever do who do you see next making that jump or vice versa going from AEW because obviously with the reports of them having a lot of disgruntled people mm -hmm. and all the reports about people feeling creatively and disgruntled fans after that oh Bill, Billy Gunn match last night but go ahead <laughs> yeah who do you feel is the next major defection from all elite wrestling that's going to make that jump and make as big as impact as a Cody did in this run right now I mean, there are people who I think are going to make the jump right. when their contracts are up. I think Ricky Starks is one. I think Wardlow is another. They're not at that level, though. Somebody at that level, I think MJF is going to go. He's not going now. I, I cannot believe that he isn't already signed. So he's probably there for another three years, would be my guess. I didn't ask. I had the chance to interview him in December. I didn't even bother asking because I wasn't going to get a straight answer anyway. So I learned a long time ago, you know, when I do interviews, like, try not to ask questions that you know you're not going to get the answer to uh so i didn't do that but mjf he he would be perfect for wwe he'd have to tone down some of his you know promos and stuff but i mean the guy has money written all over he'd be a megastar but think of the people he could work with he's got history with cody he's got history with punk if the rock were around imagine rock and mjf in a promo battle on tv i mean my god and he could work with again anybody anybody on that roster and i think i think he his ultimate destination i think is going to be wwe when it happens i think we're probably looking at that in 2027 ish probably and even then he'll be what 30 maybe 30 years old he's still very young so he's got plenty of time i think it'll be him oh, yeah. oh come on come on now are they going to send him to NXT with a different name? What are they going to call him? What What's the new name for MJF? We'll call him <laughs> Jacob Maxwell. There you go. Jacob Maxwell. And uh, he's got some kind of weird gimmick. He's like the coffee man or something like Maxwell House. They'll come up with some awful gimmick for him. So now no, he's main roster bound. Yeah. More so, I want to play a little bit of fantasy booking with you, right? Okay. So regardless of how me and his, my guy over here feels about Roman losing night two. Mm -hmm. Granted, you know, nine times out of ten, he's probably losing. Roman's going to lose. But we know the overarching goal is still rocking Roman for probably next year's Mania. How do we get there? And how does that factor into the end of the Bloodline story? Because at some point it has to end. I I would kind of like it if Rock was still healed. I just find Rock very entertaining when he's a heel. When he's a baby face, you know, he's fine. But like as a heel, like he was born to be a heel. You know, that's like the most entertaining version of the Rock. Hollywood Rock, corporate Rock. So you keep him heel where he's, you know, flexing his authority. I'm on the board. And, you know, he, he's kind of like the de facto heel authority figure now in the company. Because Adam Pierce on Raw is a baby face. It's not really a heel. Nick Aldis is a baby face. I think the ultimate goal should be to get Roman over as like a mega baby face. And I think the way to do that is if he loses the title of WrestleMania, he doesn't have to be kicked out of the bloodline, but I think it's like you've shamed the family. That's that's where the cracks really begin to show. 
And you can build a story. Rock's not going to be around full time. I think he's he's doing a movie and in, in starting in May. So he's not going to be around full time. Roman's not going to be around full time. See, this is what I'm talking about. But I think keep him heel and build to babyface Roman going into WrestleMania next year, where he's already a babyface by then. And the people want to see Roman beat Rock. There's no reason for Rock to be Roman. Why would you do that? So I think that should be the dynamic. How they get there, I mean, it could it could be any number of ways. And the bloodline, you say the bloodline's got to end at some point, but like I said, they have other people they can bring in and they can keep milking that thing. It's kind of like what WCW did with the NWO, except they killed it real quick. In this case, you know, if you book it the right way, you could keep the bloodline going for a few more years if you really wanted to. But I think Rock is the heel, Roman is the baby face. That's the way to go. Because they 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 pretty much teased it on the Tonight Show the other night when I didn't see that. See, so I there yeah. was a line that The Rock had said where he was like, they were asking him about characters in in the tag match, and they were saying like he was saying like Seth Rollins was the Joker, uh, Cody Rhodes is kind of like the Luke Skywalker, and then you have Roman the Tribal Chief, and you have Rock. I'm the final boss, mm -hmm. and there can only be one. I'm the final boss. He's a tribal. So it's like, obviously, like how you said, we all know that's the match they want to build with. So they've been teasing it, you know, still. Like, you know. Well, to go to my predictions before, Rock pins Cody on night one, right? Keeps that open for a possible match, but it does something else. If Rock beats Cody and Roman doesn't, he can hold that over him and say, you failed. You know, like, I beat Cody. You went in there on night two. It was The table was set for you. It was bloodline rules, and you still lost. So yeah, there, there's something, there's something there. I think that that's why it makes sense for it to work out that way. As uh, Woody from Suplex Vintage Wrestling, um, keeping an, an eye towards the future, mm -hmm. if you could put stock in an NXT star right now that you think in the next year or two could really make that jump to mm -hmm. me in event, a, a WrestleMania style event, who would you pick? Trick Williams. Oh. Yeah. Everyone talks about Carmelo Hayes and he's great. Trick though, I think they got their eye on Trick cuz he's he's like the whole package. He's got he's bigger than Carmelo is. He I think has more charisma, the mic skills. Yeah, I mean Melo Melo has charisma but not like Trick. And his work has really come along. I mean, he's making progress, he's getting better. Obviously there's a big match between them at Stand and Deliver this weekend. Uh, that is going to be the biggest match of his career. So they're very high on Trick Williams. I, I expect Carmelo Hayes to be up on the main roster probably next week. Trick, I think they may hold on to him a little while longer, but it won't it won't be that long before he's up there. You think you think Dragonoff comes up as well? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. We'll get him and Gunther. I saw the first two matches they had. Obviously, they were fantastic, and I think it'll be every bit as great on the main roster. So, curious about the first one. Cody cried about it on Ariel Hawani yesterday about Brandy somehow being involved in the match. So, curious where you think that. But speaking of things filled with hot air, yeah, do you think we get the Bailey Buddies back just to get that pop? Oh, for her entrance, you mean? Yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bailey Buddies. You know, it was still a traumatic thing when she cut them and they all deflated. I used to be a big Bailey Buddy guy. And they're not Bailey. They call them Bailey buddies. They're the uh, wacky, wacky, wavy, the, the giant, wacky, inflatable, wavy, inflatable tube. Whatever. Yeah. You got to say it right. <laughs> um, I, no, no, I don't think so. I don't think it really fits. I feel like it would solidify the turn. Like, I think it would be a step backwards. Fair, fair. You know, fair. I don't think. Yeah, that's I, true. I that's mean, I'm true. sure. Look, at some point, everyone gets nostalgic and we'll get Bailey come out one night with pigtails and, and balloons. Uh, I don't think it happened to WrestleMania, though. Fair. Yeah. Can I go again? Yeah. Uh, nobody had a question? Uh, so, yeah, my name's Makai. Didn't say that first time. Um, so tomorrow I am attending Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor. I'm a huge cool. fan of Athena. I've went to the last two pay-per-views to support her. Big fan of hers. With Tony Khan, you know, alluding to finally this year, um, investing into his women's division, signing Mercedes Monet, bringing in all these different women, giving women more television time, what's key. Do you believe this is finally the year Athena makes the jump back to television? And do you think he finally keeps his promise and gives the women the big time that they deserve? 
I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we we have felt that way before, and it doesn't. It, it's still not where it needs to be. The Athena thing is is completely puzzling to me. I, I don't understand it. We watch AEW television. We constantly see Ring of Honor people on AEW television. We have the world champion, right? Eddie Kingston has the Ring of Honor world title. Uh, Kyle Fletcher has the TV title. And I guess uh, uh, the kingdom, they have the tag team titles. She seems to be the only one, the only champion who is like unofficially barred from appearing on AEW television. I think the last time we saw her was the Owen Hart tournament last year. And she's fantastic. And sh- I feel like she's just being hidden away. Because the Ring of Honor audience, yeah, she, I mean, she's great. You're going to go to the Ring of Honor show. She's going to have a kick-ass match. The audience that is watching that is microscopic compared to what they could get in front of 600 or 700 or 800,000 people on TV. Uh, what is it bad? I haven't seen. It's not good. Well, that's what I mean. So Ring of Honor, and I, look, I appreciate what he tried to do by buying it to try to keep it alive instead of WWE just basically buying it and using the tape library, and that's the end of it. Um, he's talked about how he was a big Ring of Honor fan back in the day. He was a big ECW fan, right? Tony Khan went to all the shows. Ring of Honor right now feels like a dead brand. It's being propped up. He wants it to be a success. It's not. Now you have someone like Athena, who is a main, I say main roster, main roster caliber performer. She's been the champion for a long time. I don't know exactly how long it's been. I'm pretty sure it's been well over a year. She's she's murdered everybody in the division. When she wrestled Billy Starks, people thought this is it. Billy Starks is going to beat her, and then she didn't. And she just keeps on rolling. It's like the Gunther thing. It's like, okay, what are we doing here? Like, what's the end goal for this? Who who who's the like who's going to step up and be the one that you can believably like? Who's being built to beat her? Which is an honest question because I haven't been watching Ring of Honor. I don't know if they're building anybody to actually be the person to do it. Like, who's she wrestling at the show this weekend? Okay, so that's going to be a great match. I don't see Sheeta being the one to beat her, so she'll beat Sheeta, and then what? What what next for Athena? Meanwhile, he he paid to bring Mercedes into the company, which is great. I'm I'm a big fan of hers. Athena should be wrestling people like her and Willow Nightingale and Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa. And when we get her back, hopefully soon, Jamie Hayter and, and people like that. So I want her. I don't I don't care about her with the Ring of Honor women's title. You know, I mean, if we had, we don't have a garbage can here, but, you know, the Medusa thing. Right. Like get her on dynamite, get her on collision. That's where she should be. She's being wasted, completely wasted. Which is how everybody is going to be at that wrestling nightclub tonight, starting at 8 p.m. Um, this has been great, and I want to uh, I want to thank all of you guys for for hanging out with me for a little bit. Tomorrow, it, it's sold out. The show is already sold out if you don't have tickets. But uh, I am looking forward to the House of Glory show because we are partnering with Sammy Callahan's promotion, Wrestling Revolver, and we're having our first joint show together. And I don't know what the commentary situation is. I, I haven't been told, but uh, I would imagine I'll be on the call for the main the main match, which is for a lot of people, it is a dream match, you know, certainly from the independent scene where Amazing Red is wrestling Mustafa Ali. So that's gonna be incredible. You know, Mike Santana is our champion, Alex Shelley is their champion. Uh, it's title for title, champion against champion. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of other matches on the show. That's at three o'clock tomorrow. It'll be streaming online on uh, Triller TV. Uh, I am the announcer slash commissioner for House of Glory. I won't be wearing this tomorrow. I'll be in a suit and tie. So I'm looking forward to that and looking forward to WrestleMania. And uh, hopefully you guys will be tuning in for my reviews uh, this weekend because I'll be live after each night of WrestleMania. There'll be a podcast at some point this weekend. My God, I haven't even talked about the punk stuff yet but of, of all the weeks for that to to happen like of all the weeks that and the braid documentary like oh my god which was great by the way that was a, it was great yeah i actually i also watched this i don't know if there'll be a review but i watched this week's uh, dark side of the ring also on uh, harley race which was uh which was interesting they, they they share the vince mcmahon story when he um took down vince mcmahon in a restaurant when vince 
single legged him, which is a pretty stupid thing to do to Harley Rice. So yeah, but there's there's just there's so much there's too much going on this week. But uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you to our friends here at uh, iHeart Studios for sharing this amazing Dunkin' Lounge. And uh, nothing is going to top seeing my logo on a donut out there, actual Solomonster Monster donuts, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, this has been fantastic. And uh, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.